Karen and my colleague you'll see there in the blue is Emma. So we are delighted to be part of tonight's webinar and we hope that, that we teach you a little bit of something about STEM. So we're going to share our screen with you. We've put together a couple of slides. More than happy to share these slides at the end um, or pass them on to Leanne so you guys can have a look. All right, I'll let Emma just share the screen. Perfect, so we, just, we titled this um, webinar, What is STEM? So everyone, when we go into schools, we always ask the young kids or the young people, what is STEM? Do we know what STEM is? So STEM is science, technology, engineering and maths. And why do we talk about STEM? So a little bit about us. So Smart STEMs is a very small charity that started up in 2016. Our founder, Stuart McDonald, is very passionate about STEM and about give back to the community. And he really is a mathematician at heart as well. And he has young kids. So he wanted to create a platform and support those young people from any kind of background in any area in Scotland to provide them with loads of great role models within the STEM world. So what we do is we host events in schools, we host virtual events, and we also host face-to-face -face events in college and university campuses. And we host the, these events for age 10 to 14 euros. So that's primary six, seven, S1 and S2. Now the reason that we host for those age groups is because we want to ensure that we are talking to and participating with these young people prior to picking their subjects in high school, because you just never know, they might come to an event and speak to someone or see something in STEM and think, oh, I didn't realise that was maths, or I didn't realise that was uh, marketing, or I didn't realise that was engineering. I'm going to pick that subject because that's a career that I now know of and I now want to do. So for us, it's all about equity of opportunity. It's about igniting that spark and it's about providing them with role models because we truly believe you have to see it to believe it and to be it as well. So it's all about related, relatability. So then our events are very much interactive. So it's about taking STEM outside the classroom and doing it in a really fun and engaging way. So if you have a look, we do have our website, lots of really fun videos on there. You can see there's forensic, forensic fingerprint scanning, we're flooding buildings, we're doing egg drop challenges, we're creating hovercrafts, you name it. Lots of really great fun and engaging STEM. And we bring STEM industry onto campus and they work with these young people as well as the colleges and universities. So a little bit about what STEM is. Like Karen said, obviously it's science, technology, engineering and maths. Now what we want to do is break down the stereotypes that's associated with these things. For me, before I started this job, being an engineer was someone who came to my house and fixed my boiler or would fix my car, but actually there are so many more things. So um, we've tried to sort of describe them here in maybe a different way that would make um, yourself and your children see things a bit differently. So science science is about observing, doing experiments, making connections and coming to conclusions through discoveries and, and doing things and figuring out how things work. Technology, so technology is the use of tools and machines that help to identify and solve problems. Um, being inventive, um, often technology these days is also really good at helping improve people's lives. Engineering, so this is your planning, designing, creating, solving problems and challenges, um, and mathematics, although it's working with numbers, finding patterns and data, mathematics is the queen of STEM, that's what we like to call maths, it underpins everything that you do. But we hope that these sort of descriptions here make you see those, those four pillars, we call them science, technology, engineering and maths in a slightly different way and takes away those stereotypes that's maybe associated with them. So the importance of STEM as well. So although, as Karen said, we want to have that opportunity to, to change someone's mind about what STEM is and hope, for, hope that they go on to study STEM subjects in school. Although we would love every kid to do STEM in school, we know that they're probably not all gonna go on to a STEM job, but STEM equips you with lots of skills that we'll come on to. Another thing is STEM literacy. Now this might not be a term that everyone knows, but STEM literacy is the knowledge and understanding of mathematical and scientific processes and concepts required for personal decision-making and participating in cultural and civic affairs and economy, um, sorry, economic productivity. 
Now, what this kind of means um, is just the ability to process information and skills and make it an informed decision about lots of things that happen, happen in life. So I'll move on now to how it's taught in schools and Karen's going to let you know a bit about this. So how is STEM taught in schools? And you, you might notice from talking to your frame, fra friends and family, STEM is actually taught very differently in every school. And we find that really interesting when we go into schools. Some schools are absolutely aligned to the curriculum in STEM and they adhere to that. They have time out in their diaries for it. They have STEM weeks, they have STEM challenges, they have STEM learning across the whole curriculum within the school. Now, for us, it's about ensuring that STEM is aligned to the curriculum. It's about ensuring that STEM is fun in school and also ensuring that the teachers are very aware of how to teach STEM as well. So for us, it's about making sure that no matter what school we're in, is we support the teachers to then support and enable the young people. And some schools have more money, as you'll know, some schools have more um, teaching staff there that are available to them within the STEM development and within the STEM network. And some schools are actually really well aligned to STEM industry. Now, we were at a school today and it was really interesting. There was a grandfather that came in to the school and he was teaching a bit of STEM in another class while we were doing STEM downstairs for different classes. So really, there is lots of different ways. And like Emma was saying there, it's often links to uh, learning for sustainability and the sustainable development goals. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I, I could talk all day, but I'm going to let um, Emma move on. <laughs> no, my, my computer is just not playing ball. Of course it's not. There we go. <laughs> Um, so uh, we've touched on this in our previous few slides. So STEM subjects not only equip you with the, the technical skills that's required for a STEM job, but also a range of different skills that will help anyone in any career they go on to, whether it's STEM or not. So the first of these, um, critical thinking. So being able to look back on something you've done and maybe figure out how to do it better. Um, it's a really, really important skill that we find when we do lots of our challenges. We always ask the kids, how would you do it better next time? And everyone's got an idea, whether it's changing a material or giving themselves more time. Um, but all of those things are really important. Um, another maybe obvious one is problem solving. Um, so I'm sure you'll know what problem solving is, and I'm sure you use it all in your day to day life. But you'll come across lots and lots of different hurdles. And again, in any job you have, whether it's with the actual work you're doing, whether it's with software that you end up using on your computer or whether it's with people that you're working with. And all of these different things that you come up against will require you to figure out how to how to do that problem. How, how are you going to overcome it? How are you going to move on? Um, so problem solving is a really, really important um, skill set and one that all the STEM subjects will teach you um, really thoroughly. Now, I'm going to move on to a couple that you might not associate with STEM subjects. So communication and collaboration. Most STEM jobs are not done individually. Um, all STEM education and STEM jobs that I've personally had, I've been working with an amazing team and team that bring lots of different aspects to the table. So being able to communicate with lots of different types of people is really, really important. Um, again, any in any sort of career that you, you, your youngsters will go into. Um, and the last one, creativity. So um, we use the term STEM, but obviously coming into that is the art. So the term STEAM is being used a lot now because creativity is seen as a really important part of STEM. And any engineer you speak to, they probably really enjoyed a subject such as art or graphic communication at school, something that allowed them to let those creative juices flow and figure out how to do things. And creativity really helps with that problem solving aspect. So being creative with how you come up with a solution, looking at something and thinking, how can I do that better and being really creative with how you do that? So all these skill sets are what STEM subjects can afford young people, um, which will help them go on to, to any job that they go on to study. So going to chat a little bit about all the different routes into a career in STEM. Um, we'll come on to the more traditional routes that I'm sure you've all heard of, university and college. But first of all, we wanted to go through some apprenticeships now. Not many of these apprenticeships existed when I was at school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no. So um, a lot to learn. Modern apprenticeships, I'm just back to front. Modern apprenticeships, the one at the bottom, is the one that's been around for a long time. And a lot of you will know 
Um, you can do this once you leave school um, and it's where you train on the job working full time. So a lot of your um, sort of traditional apprenticeships will be a modern apprenticeship. i um, going to go back to the top foundation apprenticeships. This is um, quite a new apprenticeship that's been offered. Um, you do this when you're at school. So um, if your child is an S5 or S6, they'll have the opportunity to do a foundation apprenticeship as part of their studies. They will get to go out um, of school one day a week to go into employment and actually work in a company. And again, doing this will add to their CV no matter what they go on to do. Having an element of work experience is, is seen and, and sought after by, by many, many employers that we work with. Graduate apprenticeships. So similar to going to university, you come out of this with a degree, but the difference is that a graduate apprenticeship is straight from school, you go into a company. Now you'll often be with that company three or four days a week and the other one or two days you are at university or college studying. So at the end of the three or four years, however long your degree is, you'll come out with your degree, but you also haven't paid for it. That company pays for your graduate, um, for your degree. So it's a real win-win, I think. Um, you Against your peers, you would have come out with a degree, you've got four years work experience and you're not in debt. And friends who have just gone to uni have gone to maybe study the exact same course, but have come out in debt and they're at the bottom of the level looking for a job and against a lot of other people. So a graduate apprenticeship is really a great thing to get if getting a degree is something, something that you're after. So like Emma mentioned there, there's also the traditional routes of college and university. So college, again, you can attend college straight out of high school. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. You can attend college at the end of high school and you can also attend a college once you finish. College can teach you much more about specific subjects and it can also be aligned to um, modern apprenticeships as well. So where you would go out to college one day a week and you would work as well. Um, so you start with, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Uh, you can also study <coughs> for about two years at college before you start taking your, your final years at uni. So college can actually be a really good springboard for university. If you just feel like you're not ready yet to go to university, college is a really nice way to introduce your young people into to a career within university, which is a bit longer, a bit more structured as well. And then again, you get your you get qualifications at, at college as well. So fantastic kickstart to your career. So university, um, when I was at school, was the more traditional route and everyone should go to university. And, and now there's so many other options. I mean, university, again, is brilliant for those who want to study a more in-depth knowledge for a particular subject. Or if they were wanting to go into a field like such as healthcare, they want to be a surgeon or a doctor or a nurse. These, these particular avenues are much better to go into um, straight into university as well. But again, there's so many different varieties. And I think for us, what we want to do is make you aware of all these different varieties. When myself and Emma came along to the parents night, we spoke to several of you that just weren't too sure what even the, the directions were. So we hope that, that we broke this down for you a bit, a bit more for you to see that okay, there is a foundation. Do they want to have some time out of school? Or no, my, my child would much rather just straight into university or actually college might be might be might be useful first of all. So take the time to have a look at these slides and really kind of understand what you think would be best for, for your kids. I'll let you move on. <laughs> my laptop is just not playing ball tonight. <laughs> Always the same, isn't it? I know. <laughs> so we've put stay curious here. Um, STEM, STEM is all around us. Emma mentioned there about the skill sets. And again, the reason that we put this in is we talk to parents all the time and they say, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what STEM is or I don't do STEM or I'm not a role model in STEM. But you are, trust me, you are, you're all role models within STEM and you do STEM every single day of your life. When you think about budgeting, when you think about going food shopping, paying your bills, building forts with your kids, building the toys at Christmas, you're using so many different skills there that are so full of STEM. And like I was saying, talk to your young, young people and your kids about STEM. Think about your walk to school. 
think about all the STEM that's around you on those walks to school. When you're looking at the, the engineering or the lights or the traffic lights or the cars that you pass, there's STEM everywhere. Thinking about your morning routine, when you get up and you turn your lights on, you turn, you look at your phone or you put the kettle on, there's so much STEM involved. And have a think about how can it be done better, like Emma mentioned there. That's such a great way to keep your mind thinking and to actually interact with young people about the world that they live in and how they can make it safer. So we just don't want you to be afraid. We see these posters of the lab coats and everything. Don't let that intimidate you at all, these images. Um, please do be open to STEM. Be open to doing more STEM at home. Smart STEMs have some resources on our YouTube channel. We can post it in our chat. And our YouTube channel is full of really, really interesting people that have got jobs in STEM. And they all have a really wonky path into that career and that job in STEM. And we'd be more than happy to, to speak to you if you want to talk a bit more about what you can do at home with STEM or what you can do with your young people to do a little STEM activities to introduce you to it. Um, but I could probably talk all night, so I'm going to stop. So you could probably tell. <laughs>